Good morning, and welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Wheaton, Illinois. Let us prepare our hearts and minds as we worship God with joyful ringing.
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at St. Paul on this fifth Sunday after Epiphany as we continue with this particular long green season. We are so excited to have the Jubilation Ringers with us this morning as they share some of their musical gifts with us. And we're excited to welcome uh, a clarinetist for today, Deborah Zellman. We're excited you're here and we'll hear more uh, from her both this week and next week. We get you for two whole weeks, which is very exciting. Uh, and also, today is Scout Sunday. If you came through the doors in the back, you were likely greeted by one of our scouts here at St. Paul. And later on in worship, we'll be sharing a blessing with, of the scouts as well. One last reminder for our words of welcome. Uh, last week, we reminded you to fill out the red pew pads. And you all did a great job with that. Another reminder for that this week, except we forgot to tear off the top pew pad uh, page. You might have noticed some other people's names. If you've already filled out your pew pad, that's fine. But if, if you can, start an, a second page on the pew pad so we can keep each week separate as we're uh, gathering all this information for later. So we just ask that you still fill it out, but just start a new page if it hasn't already been started. Uh, with that, I'm going to invite our kiddos to come on down to join Pastor Jared in for Children's Church. All right. Who carried the cross last week? Okay, so that are you saying that you're going to carry it this week, Riley? Is that what you're saying? Okay. So Riley will carry the cross. We're going to hear in Children's Church today about how Jesus helps us, right? That's something we all want to hear, right? So let me help you with the cross. We'll give the other kids a chance to get up there. And let's go, about, let's go out this way so that we can form a little line. You coming with, Abby? And she will join us. Where, Ellie, where are you going? Okay, we're going. <laughs> she, you know where we are, right? She's on her way. She's coming. That's all right. Yes. You're, anyone's welcome in Children's Church. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Options available for everybody. But with that, we'll welcome them back in time for communion liturgy, and I'll invite the assembly to rise as you are able for our Thanksgiving for baptism. Praise to the triune God, one in three, three in one, crafter of creation, word of abundant grace, breath over the primordial waters. Amen. In thanksgiving for the abundant mercy, grace, and forgiveness shared with us through the waters of baptism, let us name our thanks before God. You draw us to these waters again and again, O God, to remind us of the promises inherent in them for us and for all of creation. As you shared with the prophet Isaiah, you promised to make the rough places plain in the same way that sea glass has been smoothed by water again and again. As you shared with Mary, the mother of Christ, you promised to lift up the lowly and tend to those in need, that these waters might be a source of sustenance and nourishment. These promises and more endure from generation to generation. You draw us to these waters again and again, O oh God, to remind us of the goodness we find in them. Thank you for claiming us as your children, drawing us into your care. Thank you for abundant grace that smooths our rough edges. Thank you for communicating your love to us. In these ordinary waters with which we use for extraordinary purpose, praise eternal to you, God, our creator, through Christ, our redeemer, in the unity of the spirit, our sustainer, now and forever. Amen. I invite the assembly to turn and face the cross as it enters the space as we sing our gathering hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite the assembly to be seated as we gather around God's word. A reading from Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in. Who brings princes to naught and makes the rules of the rulers of the earth as nothing? Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root of the earth when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like a stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. He un his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even the youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Word of God, word of life.
Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed by demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout all of Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Dear ones in Christ, I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Holy One of wholeness and care, you make yourself known in the world, in our joyous worship, and in the quiet spaces of our lives. Grant that as we seek to better know you, that our own epiphanies will stir us towards the work of healing which you enact and to which you call us. Inspire us through your Holy Spirit that we might be menders in the world. May the meditations of our hearts and minds be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This liturgical season that we find ourselves in is really made known to us in the big ways during these years in which we are reading specifically the Gospel of Mark in these weeks. While we did take a break from Mark last week so we could read the parable of the Good Samaritan, the other texts throughout January were all from the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark. And if you know the Gospel of Mark, you know that this is the shortest of the four Gospels, which also means that there's a lot of direct, and it's the most direct and the most succinct of the four Gospels. In the first chapter alone, there is a lot that happens. John cries out in the wilderness. Jesus is baptized in a spectac- to spectacular effect in the Jordan. Jesus goes to the wilderness. John is arrested. Some disciples are called from their fishing boat to fish for people, and Jesus heals someone on the Sabbath. All of that is in the first chapter preceding what we read today, which was also from the first chapter. Mark really packs a lot into a short amount of space, but all of these things are perfect for this season of revelations about God's work in the world. That's what the word epiphany means, sort of a revelation, new understanding, the basic crux of God's promises for God's people are affirmed anew in this first chapter alone. Affirmation through baptism, affirmation through call, affirmation through healing and wholeness. That theme is made known in today's text, too in ways both crystal clear and those that will require a hair more observation. It's abundantly clear that Christ is made known to the world through the act of healing in today's text. It's an echo of the text we would have read last week if we weren't diving into the Good Samaritan story. The portion of the first chapter of Matthew in which Jesus heals someone on the Sabbath, a day of rest, an act, the act of healing, which upset the religious norms of the time. Healing those who are sick and mending what is broken is an important part of who Jesus is and who God calls us to be. In addition to that important part of who we are as people of faith in today's passage, we're also granted a model of how we're called to engage in this work of ministry for the sake of the world. Well, how may not be the best word to describe this, but let's add where to the mix. Where we are called to engage in the work of ministry. The answer to that question, both the quiet, private spaces of our lives, as well as 
the public square. We get two glimpses of each in these verses today. The first being Jesus' healing of Simon's mother-in-law, who was ill within the quiet confines of Simon's home. This moment of healing mirrors the promise of resurrection in that immediately following this radical moment of healing that she experiences, what does Simon's mother-in-law do? She begins to serve others. The second of these reserved moments in, uh, is in Jesus' early morning retreat to engage in some time of private prayer. In the wake of a day full of healing, Jesus retreats for the sake of prayer, an introverted moment of rest and right action. As an introvert myself, I can understand Jesus' move here. Take some time for yourself. As someone who's not a morning person, I'm not sure if I'd follow through like Jesus did. Either way, I do want to note one important thing about the use of the word private that I'm using to describe these moments. Dr. Matt, Reverend Dr. Matt Skinner from Luther Seminary makes a really great point about the, our difference in understanding the word private and what that word would have meant for the people in Capernaum at the time of Jesus' ministry. These communities were packed together in open-air homes. That meant you would more, almost always be able to hear or maybe even see what was going on in your neighbor's abode. A starkly different understanding of privacy from how we might understand it. So when we think of homes as private spaces in Jesus' time, we might think of them more as residential home spaces rather than the extreme privacy we experience in our modern day. But with that distinction in mind, we can affirm that our lives of faith have a private or residential part of them, most certainly. Our lives of faith are bolstered, bolstered by our personal prayers. The time we take to beseech God in thanksgiving or in supplication. Our lives of faith are bolstered by the healing we find through rest, through medical care, and through the companionship we provide to others. Our lives of faith are bolstered by the care we provide to others in ways that we don't shout from the rooftops either. Through a meal shared with a friend who's going through a rough time. Through kind words, carefully and gently written into a card. Or any other way we might be a vehicle of God's love in quiet ways. And alongside those quiet, reserved spaces of living out our faith, we're also called to point towards these promises inherent in our faith in the public square, too. That less private understanding of private becomes abundantly clear in Jesus' abundant works of healing that happen in the middle of the gospel text today. Word of his healing work for Simon's mother-in-law spread quickly throughout the town, and there were many people who need that, needed that same restoration in their lives. Even at the end of this passage, as this first chapter of Jesus' ministry in the Gospel of Mark literally and figuratively comes to a close, the effort wasn't that the message would stay in that one town, but be shared abundantly in as many neighboring towns throughout Galilee as they might also be experiencing healing and wholeness. We, too, are called into the public square to share the gospel, to share the good news of Christ, to share that the power of death has been destroyed, to share God's abundant love and grace for all of creation. And we engage in that work in so many different ways. In our work of service towards those who are in need, that our resources might be used for the sake of good. In our work of advocacy, that the power we have within society might be used for the sake of those who don't have the power to advocate for themselves. I'm mindful of all of these public ways in which we engage the call of the gospel on this Scout Sunday. Mindful that the Scouts among us are engaging in this aspect of their faith in very visible and intentional ways. And for that, we give thanks. 
And now, dear friends in Christ, I invite us to engage in the good Lutheran practice of synthesizing the both and, that aspect of living out the gospel, mindful that we are called to live out our faith in the quiet, private moments and in our public-facing lives, too. Mindful that Lent is very near on the horizon, I'd invite you to take that season to consider the ways in which we might push ourselves to grow in one or both of these areas of our faith life. If we find those meaningful ways to engage the work of the gospel in these spaces, we're not only fulfilling our own need of promise affirmation in our private or public ways, but we're also working to meet the balance we can find in a good both and kind of way. And a final affirmation for us, and one that comes from the Isaiah text we had for today. This affirmation is for us to return to to return in the midst of discerning the work of finding balance of private and public faith, something we can return to again and again, a promise that is mindful of the universe's moral arc towards goodness, a reminder that God keeps God's promises, both for the Israelites who were freed from exile in the midst of this Isaiah text, and for us in this moment, now. There is hard work to be done in the midst of this larger moral arc, and yet there is healing we find along the way. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Everlasting God, you bring your healing power to the church. Give your church a spirit of unity and prayer that we may discern your way for us in the world. 
As we approach the season of Lent, may we remember your love for us and the sacrifice of your only Son for the atonement of our sins. Guide St. Paul Lutheran Church as we begin a new year. May we draw in new worshipers and support this community of faith in every way possible. God of grace, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Creator of the ends of the earth, you make the grass grow. You send rain for soil. Bring your creation into harmony and balance. Give animals their food. Provide healthy shelter for people. Inspire us to honor the miraculous beauty of all that you have made. God of grace, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. God without equal, your steadfast love endures forever. Watch over our country in this year of elections. We pray for peace, goodwill, and unity of spirit. Guide our leaders to serve with compassion, wisdom, and honor. God of grace, receive, receive our prayer. God who strengthens, you lift up with your hand any who are suffering. Heal those who are brokenhearted. Strengthen the weak and all in need, at home and far away. We pray especially for these beloved members, Beth B., Paul, Lois, Martin, Carolyn, Mary, Paula, Chris, Terry, Nay, Ed, Ron, Elsie, Beth H., Marilyn, Emily, and those we name silently or aloud. God of grace, receive our prayer. Make us alert to the unique ways you are at work in your people. Give us an open spirit with those whose perspectives are different from ours. Challenge us to share with each other and with others our stories of what God has done in our lives. We pray especially for scouts around the world today who realize the lifelong importance of being reverent. Help us to nurture young people as they grow in their faith. Make us alert to the unique ways you are at work in all of us. Give us an open spirit with those around us. God of grace, receive, receive our prayer. prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, our community is blessed to include uh, members of both the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts in all their varied expressions. So this time, I'll invite all of our Scouts to make their way up to the railing. And we'll come right over here, yes. And this is for Scouts of all expressions and all ages. So if you are a Scout in the past and you would like to receive this blessing as well, you're welcome to come on forward. Right here, right here, right here. Just go right here. Right here, down. Perfect. Okay. Each year in early February, we have a special blessing to thank these faithful servants for their work in service mm -hmm. and care for them to affirm their vocations of scouting and to bless them in their work yet to come. This group includes the scouts themselves as well as the leaders who help them in their work of caring for others in serving the community. So scouts, receive this blessing. Almighty God, creator of us all, bless these scouts, your servants, who want to keep their promises and law in service to others for your sake. Help them to know your voice to be willing and quick to do your work, to be friendly and loving, and to give thanks every day for your many gifts. Help them to work toward a lifetime of being trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. And grant them the grace to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, responsible for what they say and do, respectful of others, making the world a better place and caring for other scouts. Lord, we ask your continued presence in the lives of these youth as they choose to continue their commitments to scouting and their leaders as they guide them to grow into the leaders of tomorrow. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our guide and companion. Amen. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with those around you, including giving a wave to those joining us in the back on Zoom. Thank <laughs> you.
us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, by the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us your Son, Jesus, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray in the words most comfortable to each. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready and there is a place for you. Please be seated.
And now may the precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Let us pray. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power, for the benefit of all, and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I just realized I should have had you seated all along. Good Pastor Andrews will now give us some announcements. Just a handful of things to highlight this week. A reminder that we are back to having learning hour this week, which will include Sunday school for our youngest members. That'll be with me at 1045 in the children's room. Uh, Youth hour will actually be joining adult uh, education hour today uh, because Pastor Jared is going to be sharing about his trip to El Salvador downstairs in Fellowship Hall. So that'll start also at 1045. We're doing good on time. So we'll start right at 1045. uh, And I believe we're going to record that. So we can have it on YouTube for anyone who's not able to stay. We will record that because that's some exciting things that PJ is going to share. Next week, we have our uh, next intergenerational learning hour, our first one for 2024. (coughs) Excuse me. We'll be gathering downstairs after worship uh, as we continue to uh, explore this theme of who is my neighbor. We're now going to be exploring the theme of who is my neighbor that is different from me. We'll be engaging in some conversations around difference and how that helps us to better engage in the work of the gospel together. So uh, it should be a wonderful time. So be sure to come and join us downstairs next week. Also on the horizon, Ash Wednesday is on uh, Valentine's Day, February 14th. Uh, And so we will be gathering for soup supper downstairs, followed by worship up here at 7 p.m. And our book study will also start on Ash Wednesday after worship, probably around 8 o'clock downstairs. And then we'll be into all of our Lenten rhythms. You should be getting something in the mail within the next week or so uh, with lots more information about Lent and all of our rhythms together as we prepare for this particular season. Uh, To that end, we're looking way out, but Easter flowers. We're going to be starting to order our Easter flowers. So check on the epistle this week. There'll be more information about how to order, when the deadline is, and all of that stuff in this coming Thursday's epistle. Uh, And last but not least, a handful of thank yous. First, a thank you to Deborah Zellman and the Jubilation Ringers for sharing all of their wonderful music with us today. Always a joy to have our bells with here, but to be uh, joined by such a talented clarinetist was uh, a joy to have that as well. What a wonderful uh, bit of music for today. And as well, a thank you to our scouts for their help in uh, leading worship today as well. Always a joy to have you with us. Yes, a question? And we, we, we are sad that anyone is interested in ordering Girl Scout cookies. Perfect. There's Girl Scout cookie orders available in the back if you'd like to order. And Elise, correct me if I'm wrong, is there a link that we could put in the epistle for folks joining online to be able to order online? Uh, yes, sir. There, Aloise is on it. She is a salesperson. She is ready to go. So folks at home, if you would like to order some of those cookies, feel free to get in touch with staff, or if you know Eloise's, or Elise's email address, you can get in touch with them as well. All other announcements will be in the epistle, so you should be sure to checking that. Otherwise, I'll invite you to rise as you are able for our blessing. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen.
are God's beloved. Thanks be to God.